Welcome back to this series of Light Reading interviews. This is Terry Sweeney, contributing editor with Light Reading, and I'm joined now by Liam Madden, who's EVP and general manager of the Wired and Wireless Group for Xilinx. Liam, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks, Terry. It's a pleasure to be here. Xilinx is certainly no stranger to the, the, the 5G space. You guys have been active in the market for a long time. Tell us more about the latest offering in this space. Yeah, as, as you said, Terry, we've been involved now for quite some time in 5G. In fact, we were you know, present in some of the earliest deployments uh, in Korea and uh, other geographies. Um, and really the way we see 5G is that there, uh, there will be a number of waves of deployment. And we're just about completing the first wave. Um, and as a result of that, we've, we've actually got a lot of feedback from our, our Tier 1 OEMs, uh, from operators, about some of the things that uh, they're looking for uh, going forward, uh, things like expanded bandwidth, uh, you know, 400 megahertz and above, um, carrier sharing, they're looking for the opportunity to take advantage of having uh, multiple operators using the same equipment. And of course, uh, you know, we're also seeing developments in technology. We're seeing uh, a shift from LDMOS uh, PAs to, to gallium nitride. So we sort of took all that, that feedback and uh, we fed it into our newest product. Uh, it's called uh, RFS, RFSOC DFE. And uh, we did some fairly unique things. One is we took a lot of um, the technology that had been in our adaptable fabric and we hardened it using ASIC technology. And what that does is it allows us to reduce the power, but it also allows us to uh, reduce the cost of the product as well. Um, and we're really looking forward to sampling that product early next year. All right. Well, it sounds like it's very much in line with the other efficiencies that carriers and service providers expect to accrue with 5G. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, you know, uh, what they're looking for now is uh, form factor is obviously very important. Um, but also, you know, we find that power is a real uh, driving force because it also drives the weight uh, of, for example, the massive MIMO panel. And that's a really uh, key element uh, in both uh, cost and the ability to easily deploy it. So a related topic that's on everyone's mind is open radio access networks or ORAN. Um, generating nearly as many headlines as as 5G itself. Um, how does ORAN affect this market? And more specifically, what, what does Open RAN mean for Xilinx itself? So really, uh, you know, the way we look at it is it's a completely new business model. Um, and as a result, uh, is, is going to be quite disruptive in the market. Um, you know, really, the bottom line, I think, is operators are looking for control of their destiny. Uh, they want the opportunity to welcome some innovative new players, I think, into the market. And of course, you know, the, the key element is disaggregation, the ability to break down uh, the network into uh, sub pieces, and then you should be able to assemble in principle a 5G network, both hardware and software from multiple vendors. From Xilinx's point of view, I think this plays very well with our offerings. Um, we have had a very strong position, as you probably know, in, in radio. Um, but now we're seeing with disaggregation that we have an opportunity to play in the distributed unit as well. So uh, you may have seen we did a press release quite recently with our T1 card. And that allows you to do uh, both front haul and uh, L1 acceleration uh, in a PCI Express card. And then when that's added into a commodity server, you essentially replace what was a very sophisticated ASIC-based solution with a much lower cost, we believe, uh, uh, option there. So, you know, from Xilinx's point of view, it's not just the hardware. We also have IP, very specific IP. I mentioned front haul already. Um, we also have uh, things like DPD um, and uh, associated IP. So we think uh, we can offer a very full solution uh, to our ORAN partners. And finally, you know, we're members of both the uh, ORAN Alliance and uh, the ORAN uh, Policy Coalition to drive policy in this area. And we feel that that's a very important role for us in the industry right now. All right. Um, thanks for that context. Um, Xilinx has also been making headlines itself recently, uh, figuring very prominently in the news. Um, Mavenir noted your, your dominance in the, the, the radio technology market. Um, you've also scored some impressive wins with FB, Vodafone, Airtel, Samsung, um, a lot of momentum here. Um, 
what, what does this say about the market, about Xilinx and how 5G is unfolding? So that's a, that's a great question. Um, you know, the way we see it is that 5G is continues to evolve, right? We're still seeing the standards um, being nailed down. And, you know, what a lot of, um, you know, both operators and OEMs want is future-proofing of their technology. They want to know that when they invest in a design, they'll have the ability to adapt it to changes that, that are often, often happening. Um, you know, the other thing we see is uh, time to market is key. Uh, you know, there's just a lot of competition right now. And, you know, the company that turns up with the technology first is often a big winner uh, as a result of that. And, and working closely with some of our, uh, you know, customers, we have seen them take a, a clean sheet of paper, essentially, and be in field trials in about nine months or so. And that's what our technology enables. Um, you know, we will be deployed uh, in North America with uh, two tier one operators uh, next year. Um, and that includes both our key technologies, our RFSOC for, um, you know, the DFE portion, but also our new Versal uh, technology, which is our seven nanometer technology uh, for beamforming. So we're really excited to be part of uh, that deployment. All right. Lots of continued momentum, it sounds like. It, it's absolutely, yes. Liam, in just a few minutes we have left, any, any final thoughts for us? Yeah, I think, you know, one of the um, the uh, things that we've done recently is uh, just last week, actually, we had our Adapt 5G uh, virtual forum. And uh, obviously, um, you know, as far well, we're still part of uh, in part of the pandemic, um, it's really important for us to be able to reach um, our customers uh, and show them some of the technology that we have available. And uh, in that forum, there's a really deep dive on a lot of the topics um, that I talked about. But then also uh, we have some of our, our partners and customers uh, come along. We'll, we have Facebook, for example, uh, with the EvenStar program, uh, is, uh, it did a, a video with us for that. Um, and also uh, we recently made an announcement with uh, TI around some of the lower count antenna uh, solutions that we do with them. So I'd really recommend that people uh, go over and uh, see some of those talks. Great stuff, Liam. Thanks for the additional context on 5G, the, the market, and of course, Xilinx. Thanks a lot, Terry. It's a pleasure. We've been talking with Liam Madden, EVP and General Manager for Xilinx's Wired and Wireless Group. This has been Terry Sweeney for Light Reading. Thanks for joining us today.